Hey coders, how's it going? It's Chris here. And today we're going to look at saving and retrieving some data from our parse backend from the Xcode project. So just to give you a quick recap, in the last lesson, we had created a parse demo sample application. So just ignore all of these other things down here. Uh, this is the one that we created, parse demo. If you click into it, uh, we don't have any data in here, but we're going to be able to see some really soon. So let's go ahead and open up the Xcode project, which we created in the last lesson. We had also integrated the parse library. So let me open up that XC workspace file. And here we go, we added this code to set the application ID and the client key. Now in the view controller, I'm gonna show you how to save an object first. And before we do anything, let's import parse up here. And then in the view did load, I'm just going to write save an object with some properties. Now in parse, everything revolves around something called a PF object. So say for example, this was an address book application and I wanted to save some information on a friend. Well, I would create a PF object like this. So let friend equals PF object and there's an initializer called class name and I'm going to give it a class. This is going to be stored in the parse backend with this class name and all objects with this class name are going to be stored together. So let me give you an example. So let's say friend, the, the class name is, uh, let's say contact. Okay, and I'm going to say friend and I'm going to give it a property name. How about first name actually? like that equals John and another one last name equals Smith and let's say uh, email is John dot Smith at parse example dot com now what I've done here is create a brand new PF object with the class name contact and then I've set a couple of properties, just like a dictionary. So I gave it a key, first name, signed a value to it, gave it another key, last name, signed a value to it, and all of this stuff here. So I've got this PF object with these things set. Now if I wanted to save it into the backend, all I would do is I would call friend, and it has a method, save, right? It can either call save, and this will synchronously save and throw an error if it can't perform the save. And synchronously means that it's going to pause the execution of everything while it's trying to save. But what we probably want to do is save in the background instead. So you can see here it saves it asynchronously. So we can either just call save in background and not worry about it, or we can call save in background with block. And this is going to allow us to handle the result of the save, whether it's successful or it failed. There's another one called save eventually. And as you can read here, it saves the object to the server at some unspecified time in the future. So even if parse is currently inaccessible. So save eventually is okay if you don't need that data saved right away. And the benefit is that if the user doesn't have an internet connection at the moment, uh, when the user does and they're running the app, then it will save it at that point. So right now I'm gonna do save in background with block. I'm going to double click this block to open it up. There are two parameters. One is a Boolean and one is an error. So this one is just this Boolean determines if it's successful or not. And this error, if it isn't successful, will contain an error message. So inside this block, this block of code after it saves, we can say if successful, the save worked else it failed to save. So we can execute some code in either case like this. So take a note that this code is running in the view did load of the view controller. So as soon as I run the app, like I'm going to do right now, uh, it's gonna perform this code, you know, create this contact. Uh, it's going to save it in the background. So let me just run the project and then we'll take a look at our parse backend to see if the data saved. So we're not gonna see anything visually on the view because we we didn't say anything like that we probably should have put a print statement in here to know if it worked or not so right now we can't tell 
but let's check the back end and we should be able to see something. So uh, I'm on the parse back end for the demo app that I created. It says we have no classes. Let me refresh it and we should see that one here, right? If you take a look at the left first, you can see contact is this new kind of data store that we have. And this name for this store corresponds to the class name that we gave in here, right? So. So it's not like a traditional database where we have to create our database tables first. Uh, in a traditional, let's say, MySQL database, we would probably have had to create a contact table, and then we would have to create columns like email, first name, last name, stuff like that. Uh, but with parse, if you try to save something under contact and you know you have these properties and it doesn't detect that you have that, in your backend, it's just going to create it for you. So that could be handy and it also could be messy if you don't know what you're doing or you know you make a typo or something like that. So you have to be careful. Uh, so right here we see the email that we saved, we see the first name and the last name. Now if I went back into my Xcode project and I changed this class name to let's say friendly contact or something like that, if I ran this code again, it would detect that, hey, we don't have a store for this class friendly contact so it's going to create another one it's going to create another store called friendly contact and then it'll have a single row there but if i you know keep the class name contact but this time just change it to something like tommy smith and then i run this again then instead it's going to add this row of data into uh, the same table or same store like that See, so now I have two rows of data. Now each parse object has an ID and this is automatically generated when you save the object. Before we end this lesson, there's one more thing I wanna point out and it's if you click these three dots and you go to docs and under iOS go to guide, there's some good information on what we just talked about. So scroll down, you can read this stuff on your own time and it would be really great to know if you're working with parse. But what we covered today in this lesson is basically this section here, the PF object. It tells you about uh, the parse object and we also went through this saving objects. Note that the code by default is in Objective-C but there is a toggle to toggle all the code to Swift. So you can just click this little button here and you can see the Swift equivalent. So in the following lesson we're going to talk about retrieving the objects from our data store. So thanks for watching and please like the video, subscribe if you haven't and please share it with your friends if you found it useful. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.